Hello friends, welcome all. Today I will be talking about scientific research writing. So let's get started. In colleges or universities, you will be asked to write many research papers. And to write many research papers, you need to learn what goes into writing a successful research paper. This video will give you step-by-step -step directions on how most colleges or universities professors expect you to write a basic research paper. Well, what do you mean by a word research? The word searcher is an old French name which means to seek or search and re means again. So it means you are searching something which is already searched before but this time you will be taking all the search done before and adding up your search into it. So in a nutshell, we call research as an intensive search with the purpose of becoming certain or a systematic investigation into reality to gain knowledge. According to Brian Coles, an author's perspective is to get its research published is due to following reasons. 50% of authors work gets disseminated whereas 20% of authors' work will help them in, them in career prospects. 13% of the authors' work will help them get fundings from the agencies who are interested in such kind of research. 4% of authors will look for patent protection, whereas 5% are due to the other reasons. Now let us consider the factors which are important before going for publication. There are some factors which are considered uh, very important like quality and referring speed and followed by the referring standard and journal reputation. Also, editorial board, physical quality and publication services have a major role. Publication is one's intellectual property right. And if one talks about intellectual property right, then here ethical issues come into picture. Ethical issues like conflict of interest. It's very important to disclose the conflict of interest and acknowledging of the funding source or the place of research conducted is very important here. And if you're going for online submission, you have to look for supplemental information like data sets, videos, etc. For research in health sciences, approval of any animal ethic committee where research is based on animal study to be taken into consideration. Institutional review board approvals are again playing a major role here. Next important thing here is a style and language. Here you have to refer to the journal's author guide for notes on style. Some authors write the paper with a specific journal in mind whereas others write the paper and then adapt it to fit the style of a journal they subsequently choose. The main objective here is to report your findings and conclusions in clear and concise way as possible. If English is not your first language, find a native English speaker, if possible, to review the content and language of paper before submitting it. Regardless of primary language, find a colleague editor to review the content and language of the paper. Now, whenever you consider publishing your research work, you have to follow a certain structure. We have a structure of research paper. The scientific writings follow a rigid structure, a format developed over hundreds of years. Consequently, a paper can be read at several levels. Some people just will refer to the title. Others may read only the title and abstract whereas the others will read the paper for a deeper understanding. Now let's get into this. You need to decide the title of paper, which describes the paper's content clearly and precisely, including keywords. Here you should not use abbreviations as search engines or indexing databases depends on the accuracy of the title, since they use the keywords to identify relevant articles. Now talking about the abstract, abstract which is often written in and around 150 words briefly summarizes the problem, the method used, the results obtained and the conclusion so that the reader can decide whether or not to read the whole article. Together the title and the abstract should stand on their own. Many authors 
write the abstract in last so that it accurately reflects the content of the paper. Now talking about the introduction. Introduction clearly states that problem being investigated. The background that explains the problem. Reasons for conducting the research. It summarizes relevant research to provide context. It states how your work differs from published work. It identifies the questions you are answering. It also explains what other findings are, if any, you are challenging or extending. It briefly describes the experiment hypothesis, research questions, general experimental design or method. As we all are aware, any research finding is due to a proper method being followed, which is often referred as methodology. Methodology provides the reader enough details so they can understand and replicate your research. Explain how you studied the problem. It identifies the procedures you follow in chronological order wherever possible. It explains new methodology in detail. Otherwise, name the method and cite the previously published work. Include the frequency of observations like what type of data were recorded, etc. Here you have to be precise in describing measurements and includes errors of measurements or research design limits. Now let's move on to the results. Results objectively present your findings and explain what was found. They show that your new results are contributing to the body of scientific knowledge. Results follow a logical sequence based on the tables and figures presenting the findings to answer the question or hypothesis. Figures should have a brief description, providing the reader sufficient information to know how data were produced. Results are tabulated and represented in variety of forms like calculations, map, graphs, flowcharts, etc. Moving on to the discussions and conclusions. Discussions or conclusions should describe what your research mean in context of what was already known about the subject. They indicate how the results relate to expectations and to, and to the literature previously cited. They also explain how the research has moved the body of scientific knowledge forward. Here, do not extend your conclusions beyond what is directly supported by your results. Avoid undue speculations. Finally, outline the next step for further study. Now next comes bibliography or references. Whenever you draw upon previously published work, you must acknowledge the source. Any information not from your experiment and not a common knowledge or information should be recognized by a citation. How references are presented varies considerably for this you have to refer to notes for authors for a specific journal. You have to avoid referencing that are difficult to find. You also have to avoid listing related references that were not important for the study. Now the final content or the final part of structure of an article is appendices. Appendices is to present relevant details such as letters to participants and organizations. It also presents the details of questionnaires, surveys and other relevant instruments that you developed for purpose of the study. It is also to present relevant documents like reports, policy, historical documents. Now let's talk briefly about four major referencing styles. The first major referencing style is American Psychological Association style or we call it as APA. If there is one author, then the last name of the author with the publication year is inserted here. Similarly, if two authors then link the names with an ampersand followed by the publication year. However, if more than three authors are involved, then only the first author is cited followed by at all, which means and others and followed by the publication year. Moreover, more than one work is cited within the single parenthesis within the semicolons. Now second method is modern language association or MLA style. 
If the work with multiple authors is cited here, the author's last name is included in the parenthetical citation. However, if it has three or more authors, then the name of the first author is followed by et al. The third referencing style is Harvard style. When a work of two or three author is cited here, the name appears in the same order as that of reference. However, the word and is used instead of an ampersand. If the work has four or more authors, the surname of the first author is cited along with the et al. Now the fourth and last referencing style I was talking about is Vancouver reference style. It uses a number series to indicate references. Bibliographies list these in numerical order as they appear in the text. Now after finalizing the structure of publication, you should surely check plagiarism. Now what is plagiarism? According to Oxford Dictionary, plagiarism is the practice of taking someone else's work or ideas and passing them off as one's own. In precise words, plagiarism is an act of fraud. It involves passing off someone else's work as your own, whether we do these deliberately or not. Now, if you are not acknowledging when using information that is data, tables, figures or graphics from other writers, then you will surely fall into plagiarism. What to do to avoid plagiarism? Now, first of all, you have to understand the context. Do not directly copy paste the text verbatim from the reference paper. Use quotes to indicate that the text has been taken from another paper. The quotes should be exactly the way they appear in the paper you take them from. You have to identify what does and does not need to be cited. Any words or ideas that are not your own but taken from another paper need to be cited. While citing your own material, if you are using content from your previously published paper, you must cite yourself. Using material you have published before without citation is called as self-plagiarism. The scientific evidence you gathered after performing your test should not be cited. Facts or common knowledge need not to be cited. If unsure, include a reference. Manage your citations. Maintain records of the sources you refer to. Use citation softwares like EndNote or Reference Manager to manage the citations used for the paper. Use multiple references for the background information or literature survey. For example, rather than referencing a review, the individual papers should be referred to and cited. Authorized license plagiarism checkers are widely available and can give you detailed report on percentage of plagiarized content you have. You can use various plagiarism detection tools such as Authenticate or ETBlast to see how much of your paper is plagiarized. Now, after completing all this, after going through the structure of the research paper, now what are the different things which you have to take care while submitting a publication? You have to select your journal carefully, read the aims and scopes, think about your target audience and the level of your work. Do you have a realistic chance of being accepted? Follow the guidelines in the notes for authors and include everything they ask. It makes your job easier. Articles should not be submitted to more than one journal at a time. During the online submission, we all are aware that many publishers now offers a complete electronic submission process. Article is submitted online and all of the review procedure also happens online and speed ups the editorial process. Now, what are the priorities of selecting a journal? You have to see a journal's quality, its prestige. What is a collection procedure? What is its specialization? What is its habit? What about the previous publications? How about the speed and time delays? There are some key determining factors to look for, like impact factor, reputation of journal, access to the target audience, overall editorial standard, publication speed, international coverage, and finally open or closed access. Now what you have to do 
after you submitted your paper. Most journal editors will make an initial decision on a paper to review or to reject. Most editors appoint two referees. Refereeing speed varies tremendously between journals. Authors should receive a decision of accept. Accept with revision, minor or major, or reject. If the paper is rejected, most editors will write you explaining their decision. After rejection, authors have the option of submitting the paper to another journal. Editor's suggestion should be addressed. Now you have to keep few things here into mind. Editors and reviewers will always looking for original and innovative research that will add to the field of study. For research-based paper, ensure that you have enough number to justify sound statistical conclusions. For a larger study, it may be better to produce one important research paper rather than a number of average incremental papers. Thank you for watching this video. For more videos, please subscribe and press the bell icon. Do like, share and comment for more informative and helpful videos for you all.